Hey guys, Bob here, aka Mr. Reef Safe, and today I'm going to review the Hanna Marine Master Checker. Today's review is going to be a little different than I normally do. I wanted to make this a little more conversational, a little more uh, on the spot, kind of the way I do my own um, tank parameter checking. So I'm just going to uh, put the microphone on, put the camera on, and just show you how I do it, walk you, walk you through what I do with this thing. It's really easy to use. Um, I have come to really like it. I didn't like it at first, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but overall, I, I, I've really come to like this, and I think that this is a good choice uh, for people that don't have the other checkers. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to do a nitrate and phosphate test on my aquarium with the HANA Marine Master Test Kit. This is the new one that came out just a few months ago. Um, I did an unboxing for it and I said I would do a review. When I first used it, I have to be honest, I didn't like it. I was resistant to it. It just seemed like it was kind of a waste to me. They had good test kits and why put this out? There's a total of seven tests you can do with this. You can do pH, alkalinity, calcium, nitrate low range, nitrate high range, nitrite ultra low range, and phosphate ultra low range. Uh, when you consider that the checkers themselves are about $50 a piece, you get seven of them. If you get one for each of these, you're going to spend about $350. The master checker is $400. So to me, the, the price was a little bit skewed. Now I know that the pH pen and the salinity pen are probably about $70. So maybe it works out. But most of these test kits you don't use on a regular basis. So I was resistant to this. However, I have been using this for a few months now because I gave the old ones to my stepson and it made sense for me to uh, start using this because I said I was going to do a review on it. So I'm going to just walk through and tell you how I do things. So you get two culvets with it. I like to store it with RODI water in it just to keep it good and clean. Uh, that way anything that's in there, anything that you can't rinse out readily, uh, fairly easy. You can just leave it in there and hopefully it'll dissolve over time. The little caps are a little bit difficult to get out. Um, not too bad. I, I do like that they're tight, uh, but they are a little bit difficult to get out. And I like to have a cup there to pour the extra into. And my aquarium is right behind me. You probably can't see it in the, uh, the camera lens, but you'll notice here, I saw on the camera lens, that looks like uh, flowing water. That is the reflection of my tank. Now, what I like to do is take a little bit of tank water and swish it around to get that uh, RODI water out of there and pour that out just because I want as good a reading. And I'll do that a second time just with uh, one pipette, pipetter full and again, shake it out. It there now this is this one I always make sure that this one is just my tank water no reagents go in this one this one is purely tank water and when you're filling up this one you want to get it to the line but it's not going to be a big deal if you're a little bit over the line uh, which uh, right there, let's take a look. I like to put it on a flat surface. I'm a little bit over. I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to put the, the uh, inner cap back in and then the screw down cap on. Make sure it's tight. And then I'm going to take it and wipe it down. I'm going to wipe this here. Now, again, this one is just tank water. Nothing but tank water will ever go in this one as long as I do the tests. And I'm going to put that one aside. I'd like to keep that one to the left of the checker. And then the one to the right of the checker is the one that I always use for reagents. This one I'll clean a lot more uh, thoroughly. Uh, I will use um, uh, citric acid on it and even uh, mur muriatic acid on it uh, if, if I think it needs it. I've done that in the past with other ones. Again, I stored it with RODI water, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some tank water and I am going to just really give that a good shake. 
get anything out of there that might have been in there make sure that all the DRDI water is out just because I don't want that to skew the readings in any way shape or form and I'll do it a second time with just one one little uh, pipette pipette or full and then I'm going to fill up to the line and this one I'm going to do exactly to the line usually what I like to do is sit it on my aquarium right on the uh, the rim of the aquarium because that I know is perfectly level I spent a lot of time making sure that is level I can't can't be a hundred percent sure that this table is 100 percent level but I'm going to trust it today for the sake of this video uh, and I'm going to take my time and get that right and because I'm old and I'm losing my eyesight I'm going to put my readers on you probably can't see that in the video that's okay you don't need to see that in the video but there we go and I've got that up to the line uh, if you're holding it straight I'm just going to double check that because I do want to get as close to the reading as I can and it looks like I need to add just a couple more drops to that so I'm going to do that right now just let's see three or four more drops and I will check it again and up against the rim of my tank and it is perfectly level now so at this point I've got to choose which test I'm going to do first and uh, the phosphate test takes a shorter amount of time so I will start with that one and uh, it comes with a good amount of um, reagents I believe it was 25 reagents it started with and I've done quite a few tests already um, I like to keep extra reagent on hand so I've got a a uh, toolbox that I keep all my spare reagents in and I'm gonna just put that to the side and I've got this now what I'd like to do you see it says to cut along the dotted line I like to flick the packet quite a bit to make sure that the reagent goes down to the bottom the other thing I'd like to do is take and fold the packet in half just a gentle fold and then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut straight down the line and then I can simply open it up and I've got a clean cut and you can see all the reagents right there tap it a few more times a little bit and then I'm going to take that and carefully pour that tapping gently I want to make sure that all of the reagent that I possibly can get in there will go in then you just take the pack and you can toss that to the side and you can put your cap back on and then you want to start a timer and go for two minutes and I'm not going to record that part so I'll see you in two minutes all right that's been two minutes I timed it and my reagent is ready I'm going to put the cap on that and if you notice that I wiped it down already but I'm gonna wipe it again because I want to make sure that there are absolutely positively no fingerprints on there that will skew the reading and again I like to keep that to the right of the checker and the sample uh, to the left of the checker simply gonna turn the checker on now when you first get it it comes in uh, instruction mode so it'll walk you through things and you can keep that on there and I'm already set up for phosphates because that was the last test I did and I'm going to put my sample in and when you put the sample in the lid has a little arrow here that lets you know that's at the bottom it locks into place so you can't turn it you, if you if I were to pull it up and kind of skew it you can see I can turn it around but when it locks into place and you get it in place it doesn't really move maybe a little bit of wiggle but that's about it now I'm going to come over here and I don't know if you can see that on the camera but on this one it says zero so I'm gonna zero that out and I'm gonna put that back down I'm gonna zero it again because I had it up and I want to make sure that it is uh, zeroed out properly so I'm gonna lift that out now I'm gonna take this and I can't remember if I wiped it well enough so I'm gonna wipe it again one more time and then I'm gonna put that in here find the same arrow put it down at the bottom and then you're gonna push the read button unlike the individual checkers you don't have to hold it down until the timer comes up it shows up right like that and starts the countdown and again I'm not going to record this part so I'll see you guys in about three minutes okay we're down to about 10 seconds now and I do the countdown here and just get ready to see what my readings are it's pretty quick um, 
I think I like this better now that I've been using it, better than the, uh, the individual ones. And my phosphates are 0 0.09, so a little bit high, but uh, I'm actually okay with that. Um, I had the Tropic Marin Pro from Turkey, which was uh, causing real bad issues with phosphates in my tank, and I had a really bad hair algae outbreak that I'm still dealing with. But um, I've been working on getting that down, doing different, different methods to get my phosphates down. So I'm actually quite pleased with 0.09. Uh, it was 0.08 when I checked it uh, just a few days ago. So 0.09 is not bad. And uh, I've been working on getting uh, more stuff out of the tank, blowing out the rocks and stuff like that. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to pour that in the, the cup as well. And I'm going to, once again, clean my culvert with some... Uh, tank water here and kind of shake that around. I'm going to do that a couple times again because I don't want any of the reagent from that, uh, from the phosphate test, messing up my nitrate test. And uh, do that again. This time I'm going to put a little bit more water in there, shake it again and pour it out. And now I'm going to fill it up to the 10 milliliter line. So I think it takes about four of these approximately, give or take a little bit. Uh, and we'll just do this and I will run that test and you'll see what my nitrates were. Last time I checked my nitrates, they were just under 14. I think they were like 13.6, 13.8, something like that. Um, and I'm going to check it on the rim of my tank again. Again, I want to get this as close as possible. I'm going to put a few more drops. I know I'm off camera, but I'm going to put a few more drops in there. and. Uh, that one's ready to go. The nice thing about the master test kit versus the other ones, I didn't like to use the same tank water uh, on different test kits because I didn't want to mess up the vials, so I'd constantly have to get new um, uh, sample water. Now, I know that that's probably a little bit anal, but you know that's how I did it. Um, now, I'm going to go back here. I'm, I'm going to go to the, the list, which is the three lines here, and hopefully you can see that on camera and then I'm going to go to select oh no nope. I'm gonna go back to the three no that I was right so I'm gonna go to the the, uh, the select and I'm gonna go up to make sure I've got the right one and I've got the high range nitrate uh, nitrate and that's right there and I'm gonna hit select and that's gonna take it to methods and then I'm going to hit the back button and it's going to take me to the nitrate screen so I can do the test there. All right, so that's been two minutes. And you notice, maybe, maybe you can see this, but the uh, screen has gone blank. And I'm going to just hit the power button again to light up the screen, put it down. I'm going to zero it out. Uh, that's my sample water in there. And there it's reading zero. I'm going to lift that up, put it to the left. And now I'm going to take and wipe my culvert. Again, I can't remember. Maybe I already did this, but... I'm wiping it again because I want to make sure I did. And then I'm going to hit the read button on this side. Now this one takes eight minutes and I'm sure that you guys don't want to sit here and watch an eight minute countdown. So I will see you in just under eight minutes. While I've been waiting for the eight minute timer to go down, I went ahead and cleaned my sample culvert. So that is RODI water in there now. I fill it up to the, the 10 milliliter line. If you fill it up any more, it will leak because the pressure in it is too great and the inside cap will come loose. So I like to do that just to keep it store, uh, in storage, just like I said earlier. So we're down to the last five seconds and we're going to see what the nitrates are at. And here we go. And 1.55. My nitrates are really low, so uh, I've got to be careful of that. I don't want them dropping too low. Um, so I will have to figure out what to do about that. But uh, you can see this is pretty pretty easy to do. Um, it's just like the uh, the individual checkers, but this is the master checker. It does all of them. Um, another little feature on this that I did not mention earlier, you can go to log recall. Um, you can actually store up to 10 tanks worth of information in here. So if you have more than one, you can actually store your readings in it. And uh, then you will be able to recall it anytime you want. Um, uh, I'd like to have seen more than just 10 tanks because this I think would be great for people to do aquarium maintenance and it would be great uh, I think that they would probably have more than 10 tanks in order to maintain a business um, so I think there should be like an unlimited amount of tanks in there but anyway uh, 
that's how it tests. Well guys, that was the review, or at least the walkthrough on how to use this thing. Um, overall, I will give this a solid B. Um, I think that there should be some more tests on this, uh, maybe um, some of the more popular ones. I don't need to check pH with this. I don't need to select ch uh, check salinity with this. I guess it's good to have on there. Um, I, I need the major ones. I need phosphates, nitrates. Um, I, Ammonia would have been nice to have on here for people that are just getting into this. I think that anyone that's been in this hobby for a while probably has uh, has those tests, uh, the other HANA checkers, and they're not going to go back and buy something like this. Um, but for a new Aquarius, someone that doesn't have the HANA checkers, I highly recommend this. I think it works really well. It's easy to use. Like I said, there's a tutorial mode on there that you can keep it on, or you can turn that off once you get to know how to use it, and it helps walk you through it. So I will give this a solid B. I'm Bob, AKA Mystery Safe. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment below.